Hey everybody, I'm Suzanne. In today's video, we're gonna paint a little snuggly pair of river otters. Now, I find river otters to be some of the most playful, fun, intelligent, loving little creatures. They just are, they just always look like they're having a good time, right? They, they are aquatic um, mustadai family. They're the same fi family as skunk and weasel. Um, and they, but they like to live, you know, they live in near the water and that's where their primary uh, food source comes from. And they just look like they're always having fun. And um, so that's what we're gonna paint today. I'm gonna show you the actual completed piece. And here you can see the actual completed piece. And we're, I'm gonna take you step by step through the whole process of how I created this piece and uh, yeah, give you all kinds of information. And stick around till the end, we'll talk a, a little bit more about some of the compositional elements that went into the work and some other good stuff. So if you are my subscribers, thank you so much. And if you're not, please consider subscribing. And if you like to watch real-time painting tutorials, please check out my Patreon channel and uh, we can have some fun there too. So let's go ahead and jump in to a little snuggly pair of ri river otters. <laughs> So you see, I have just a really rough sketch of our little otters and I wanted to be able to make the, you know, I'm using a 12 by 12 gessoed panel. It's a super slick panel, which means you can see how, um, <laughs> how fragile the drawing is in vine charcoal. So it's really just to give me an idea of where everything is going. So I wanted to have this little snuggly pair of, uh, otters here but I'm I'm trying to you know as far as the composition I wanted to have them very close to a river so it's it's a sloping bank and I just wanted to give that type of uh, I don't know look um, what I'm probably gonna do and I've even changed my mind I'm probably gonna do a very dark area over here in this corner compositionally to, cre to still create the eye to go down this way so I'm gonna have some foliage and some plants back here my, my little main characters here in this bank with some of the water. And I think the water is going to be interesting to paint. So here to talk about a little bit about our, our, our lineup for our first, uh, first pass on the color. I have, um, this is raw umber, burnt umber, ivory black, Payne's gray. I got a little bit of uh, um, burnt sienna down. I have, of course, titanium white. I have king's blue. I have ultramarine blue. Daxazine Violet. This is ooh, Purple Lake, Caput Mortem, the, and Sennelier's Natural Tint. So these are both Sennelier colors. I've got, um, as far as some of the greens I have down, um, initially I'm just putting down uh, Terra Vert. This is a Michael Harding, Windsor Newton's Sap Green, and another Michael Harding's uh, Italian Green Umber. So that's what we're gonna start with and we'll move through. I'm sure that um, I'll be adding more paint as we go. I, you know, I am starting this on a Sunday afternoon and hope to finish it tomorrow. So I wanna, you know, go ahead, full disclosure, even though I'm considering this somewhat of an a la prima piece, it will be done in a course of two days because it's late afternoon Sunday and it'll finish it uh, tomorrow morning. And because I have a super, 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 super slick surface, I will take advantage of the fact that I'll have a little bit of dry time on my first pass on the paint here. And so when I'm able to come back and finish it up, hopefully it'll be a little bit drier. So I am going to use very little medium. Um, I have, as far as medium, I generally use linseed oil and the, um, um, the Gamsol. But because I really don't want it, I want it to kind of have something to lay down and add some tooth to the piece, I want to go ahead and, and, and work on it um, without a lot of medium. So let's go. We're going to start out by just using some dark values that I create by using um, a little bit of umber. This is, this is burnt umber, but then I decide to switch it over to using ivory black and the um, purple lake. And I'm just kind of sketching in some of the dark values that are going in to the otters themselves. And just like magic, I added some uh, cad red and yellow ochre to our palette. And I, it was evident that I was going to need to add 
some of these really warm colors to these areas of the otters. And again, I'm just doing my blocking in. And you can see where I have my um, cool paints there on the right. I keep adding a little bit of either the natural tint by Sennelier or the um, one of the other cooler colors like the Purple Lake and the Caput Mortem to some of these colors because if they're too warm, I gotta cool them down. As I move through this front otter, I can see it gets cooler towards her rump. So I'm using a lot of the King's Blue into that mixture of the umber there on the other side. And I'm still using that brush, which happens to be a number five um, uh, Rosemary Filbert. Um, and I am mixing that to keep the cool colors. And so you can see a lot of the cool colors that I'm mixing there on the right. Um, the King's Blue comes in quite handy. So even King's Blue and Titanium White makes a really nice light gray color. And I am using the, um, actually it's an Eclipse, no it's not, it's a um, Evergreen Pointed Round by Rosemary right now. And it's doing a lot of the, it's getting in, in, in all the little tight places in a nice sort of way. But you can see I'm just putting those grays in. Taking a little tiny bit of paint right on the tip of my brush. Nice. Still. round brush to get in all the little tight details here and keep in mind folks this is the first pass I started this on late Sunday afternoon I still had some natural light coming in and I was just just trying to get the first pass on this particular painting and since I am working on a super super slick substrate um, I really need to have paint down to be able to put the details in because it's so slick and I can use this paint, uh, this little wipeout tool to do a lot of my corrections and little tiny details that I'm, I know I'm gonna need. And I am dying to get the whiskers in folks because I love using this wipeout tool for whiskers and little detail. But I am just really wanting to get this down um, as quickly as I can. And so you can see that I'm actually using that brush. It's creating a very subtle, but it's still there. Um, hair texture or fur texture just by the direction of which I am using the brush. So keep in mind folks, the, the direction that you use your brush does matter. Now the, the, the back end um, otter that you just see his face, I'm putting down the gray um, mixture that I make with the um, King's Blue and Titanium White. And I've got to get his little nose in and you know I already wiped off some of it because I guess I was putting it down too a little too low and so yeah you know a lot of corrections and things happen through the whole process as I'm as I'm tripping along here but I'm really pleased so far how it, this painting feels and how everything's going in and this is really super fun
So as I was saying, I wanted my, my basic composition to go down in this direction. And since otters, river otters, tend to stay on river banks, I want this to be the water below. And I want this to be kind of a little slippery, so like they're just sitting on a little ledge. I'm probably gonna have some rocks and things. And I'm just gonna take some, um, I'm gonna just use some ivory black and ground or secure the area that my otters are laying on. I'm also wanting to mess back here a little bit. And this is the fun part, y'all. Okay, so I'm taking some ivory black, burnt umber, and a little tiny bit of cad red. And I'm gonna go in the, into the back here. And I may be pulling some greens in. It is a, a, a transparent color, so I will be putting paints in it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take, um, I'm going to suggest some grasses like this, some grasses that may, and the paint scrapers, y'all, are the bomb. Now, I may take some of these out, and this may, but I like that look, okay? Remember I said I wanted to add some interest in this general area. And I think that will be enough to bring it together. I want this back here to be dark because again, I want it all to move in this direction. So if you don't have a paint scraper, and I do get asked um, quite a bit on whether it's on, it, on um, YouTube or on Patreon. This is the Wipeout tool, Creative Mark. It, you can get them from Jerry's. It's by Creative Mark. So if you just tap in Creative Mark Wipeout tool, this is what you're going to get. Now, get more than one because you'll want them. <laughs> just get them. You'll love these things. All right. So I did that. And I'm going to just take, even if this is going to seem very intense at first, because I have wet paint, I'm just going to go ahead and suggest these, this little nice spring grass in here. Because when it dries, I may I, I may go back and add um, some other colors, some different colors for the stalks, but. I kind of suggested where the grass was going I go ahead and start blocking in this little muddy bank that these uh, little otters are perched upon and I also need to block in the water and I'm using a lot of the same colors that I put into the otters into the mud into the water it's all making for a very harmonious piece and again remember folks this is the first pass of the um, painting this is all started on sunday and it all the fun detail doesn't really start to happen until uh tomorrow the next day so um but already i'm loving this piece i can already tell you that this is just a really fun piece and i'm digging it i'm totally digging it so the comp you know as far as the 
um, the process here, like again, I'm just using a lot. You can see right here what colors I'm mixing to create the, the water, but you're gonna see how much it changes on the next pass. I just have to have that tooth down for this paint to adhere for all the fun detail and all the good stuff. So that's what's happening here. Okay, so I'm, I'm still doing great on time and really having a ball with this piece. So I am using this brush. It's, it's, it's still the same uh, pointed round brush that I'm using. And just doing a little bit more detail inside of the otter's faces and just putting down enough. I need to get a little bit down further because you know I'm dying to use that paint scraper to uh, create the whiskers. <laughs> I just can't help it. I am so I want to have enough done on this front face so that and the area around the front face, meaning the um, back end of the other otter, so that I can put the whiskers in. And this, you know, if you have a good pointed round brush, you can get, even though it may be a big brush, you can still get a lot of detail if you use your brush with a light hand. Now, and by, by light hand, I mean not putting a lot of pressure on the brush. Let the tip of the brush do the work. And so I'm, I'm moving out some of this, this the back otter's um, hind quarters, and I'm, I'm making some adjustments as I go. Keep in mind, this is the first day, so everything's super, super wet, super, super slick, and it's easy to make any type of corrections. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's coming about. And you know I'm getting close to being able to use that little paint scraper to scrape in those whiskers because that, folks, is what I'm dying to do. Um, if you don't have one of these little wipeout tools, you'll definitely want to get one. And here we go because I can't wait. I'm just putting in all this dark value so that those whiskers will really pop. And everybody likes some popping whiskers, right? And so I'm using, there we go, see? Oh, that is so satisfying. I can't even tell you how satisfying it is to be able to do that. And so I'm also kind of suggesting where some of the hair will go to, knowing that this will be wet tomorrow when I go back to work on it the next day, um, I will still have some work time on it, but it, it's really ideal or um, optimum to, if you're going to use a wipeout tool to do something like whiskers, is to do it right at that moment while the paint is super wet and especially helpful if you're doing it on a super slick surface like this particular substrate, which happens to be a gessoed panel. 
And, you know, I, I'm able to get, and I can already tell you that one ear on the right is a little too low, and I'll pick up on that tomorrow on the next, on the next pass. But I, overall, I'm feeling super good about um, the process here on this particular painting as we move through. So here we are in day two. And since everything's just had a little bit of time to just kind of set up a little bit, I'm going back over the background because one of my little pet peeves in this world is not having brush strokes or that weak look of substrate shining through paint in the background. So I'm just kind of going back over the background. And now that I've got a little tooth on there, th um, the paint adheres a little bit better and just kind of bringing that home, just really darken that up a little bit. So, and I'm using a combination of the same colors I started with. There's a lot of um, the uh, sap green and I have the, um, I have, hmm, what was the other green I was using? It was uh, Terra Vert actually. And I'm using a lot of the ultramarine blue and I'm really just popping it in. And, and when I need to, I'm using even umber, just a raw umber. And I'm feeling pretty good about how everything's looking and um, kind of touching up that grass there too. I really do like using the paint scraper just to make, you know, the, the first pass on the grass. And so a lot of the, the parts of the grass that go below um, need to be darkened up a little bit. So I just use, um, add a little bit of um, ultramarine blue and sap green to some of the lower um, pieces of the foliage down below so it disappears and to make some of that um, grass shine a little bit we're going to add a little bit of titanium white and highlight the grass just a little bit and I am using a, a little rigger brush it's an ivory rigger and um, popping in a little bit more color just foliage just suggestion and then I kind of soften it up um, sorry I keep bouncing around here but I just kind of you know, they're just putting, popping in some colors here and there into the background just for interest. I'm using that same little pointed rigger just to start creating the detail in the rear otter's uh, face. And this is the fun stuff. I, you know, I love the detail. And this is the smallest brush that I use on this piece. And this is a 12 by 12. So, you know, it, they're, the, overall, the, these are really tiny little faces since this is not a huge piece. And I am using uh, this little rigger to do all the little fine detail. Um, and you can see how I stack the color. I'm, I'm having to put the dark values in there and then 
pop around and change over to doing um, some of the light, lighter values that um, overlap some of the dark values. So I'm having to be, you know, conscious of the direction that the hair is going, which way the layers roll, whether it's light on dark or dark on light. And I'm going back and forth with the whole thing. And, you know, you can see how easily uh, when you have a good brush, you can really get that detail in just with that one brush. And, you know, I'm putting the fun detail in the little eyes and all that good stuff, but it's all happening. And this is happening with this small, um, ivory rigor. about my rear otter's face. I think he looks pretty handsome. It's time to work on the front body of the forward otter. So I am just putting down a base color of her body. And as I move towards her rump, it gets much cooler. So I'm really um, using a much cooler color and I'm making corrections for shape. So the I actually took raw umber, purple lake, and uh, King's Blue to make that lighter version of her rump color. Again, being conscious that those colors you're going to see again in some of the mud. So I'm using a little ivory dagger brush to do some of the little detail of the dark values in her fur. And being conscious, very conscious, of the direction that the fur is growing. There is form that is happening and it's very subtle, but her hip and her knee, if you will, are going to, you know, they're, they're there in that rump section. So I will use this little brush to create the actual shape. So be, you know, watch, watch how that happens. And I'm using varying degrees of browns and blacks that are going into all this. This is not just one color that's going down. You can see that is an ivory black kind of going in that way. But as you get towards the rump, you see that brown. So you see how I'm creating her hip there by using the darker value to suggest that that's where her knee is and over her hip area. And um, I'm just having fun. Now this little, uh, this little ivory dagger is doing amazing um, amazing detail work for me and um, but in some areas I will switch back to the little um, the little ivory rigger brush the little skinny ivory rigger also known as a liner but this if I leave the brush a little bit frayed on the dagger it does allow for more than just one hair at a time which which is pretty pretty handy when you're doing lots of fur
again, as I get closer to the back side of her rump, it, the, everything is a lot uh, more highlighted and lit. And you'll see how I'll be able to take that same color and go back over and see I'm creating her hip and her knee area here. So you're able to see that this animal is not just a big old lump, but actually has body parts. And, and just, you know, you have to watch, you have to observe the direction of fur. And, you know, I'm going back into doing some of the detail on her face and moving through the piece. Singer, what are you doing, honey? What's up, bud? Are you bored? Because you, you keep getting my feet and getting my legs. Are you bored? What's the matter? That right there, folks, is a dog who is just bored out of his mind. He's trying to get me to play. We, we took a play break. We did that. He says, I want to play more, Mom. After lunch, okay? We'll go for a walk after lunch. Can you just chill? Do you think you can do that? Just be a good boy? Can you sit? Yes, good boy. Won't be long. Okay. Hopefully Singer can be content for just a little bit. I am going to get some of this hair on here. Using that handy dandy dagger brush again to create that fur texture. And the top of his um, tail is a little bit brighter and lighter, but as his tail rolls down, it, it gets a lot darker. And so I'm able to manipulate that paint and you can see the paint on the side as I'm using it. Um, I'm just kind of suggesting where all the hairs go. Now, he has, he's obviously, they, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, they are aquatic animals and are oftentimes wet. So I am going to have to create that wet look of fur. Um, and I'm leaving that one little patch of fur that seems like I'm not touching it with this little brush because I know I have to make this really intensely um, pointy looking fur uh, where the wet is. So, um, and you can see that I'm using a lot of the cooler colors as I roll down through the tail and then I'm, I'm intermitting, you know, intermittently adding some of the dark values on top. So it really creates for a fullness in that nice tail and you'll see here in a minute then I'm going to go ahead and jump in and put these that really wet dark fur so if you watch it's gonna happen I've switched over from the dagger brush to going back to the ivory rigger to do this detail of the wet fur. And um, I'm using a lot of the cooler colors because their fur is really dense and thick. 
So as it recesses or, or comes is closer to the body, it's going to appear to be cooler in temperature. And as I come towards the the um, the end of the furs, it, that's why I'm switching over to these um, the warmer colors. And you can see I'm using quite a bit of the yellow ochre and white combo to do some of that. So of course, I'm getting to play with what, folks? Yellows and purples, which are complementary colors, which I love to do. So I'm creating that wet texture. Again, this is a you know crazy observation to be able to know which direction the fur is growing. So you gotta stay in tune with what you're doing to make sure that you can actually complete that task appropriately know the direction of the fur and that's what I'm doing here so I'm adding some of the lighter purple colors and again you'll see that in the mud here in a little bit and uh, yeah just doing all the fun detail here and I'm using the ivory rigger the fun detail you know this is this is where I'm <laughs> this is my jam <laughs> I love doing this and you can see still using the same little ivory rigger to uh, get the detail on her face and you know her eyes and her nose and all the little fun aspects that make otters so amazingly adorable right um, yeah so and you can see that the paint scraped whiskers are still holding up but I'll probably have to touch them up with a little bit of paint as well but you know, to create that dimensional nose, you know, you're going to use that. I'm using a little bit of the King's Blue on the top. That's the shiny part. And give her a little bit more shine on her nose and just put a little dab of titanium white there and refining the shape a little bit more. And oops, I took away that highlight. Got to put some more in, go back, take some of that. You can see it's a little, it's give and take all day long, but it's happening you know i'm making sure i get her little whisker tracks in and all the little details that go into the face and you know how i love doing eyes eyes are always the, the most fun for me to paint and um even though this is very small uh it's still it still speaks volumes when you get it right and uh, so i'm just getting that little eye in and having a ball Remember, folks, if you have any questions that you're seeing me cover throughout this video, please leave it in the comment section. Um, I will be glad to explain or um, the best I can uh, any questions that you may have about uh, anything you're seeing in this painting process here. But this is fun. And I know that I'm almost done.
Now I'm working into the evening on this piece, so you see that I'm using a lot of light, um, uh, artificial light. That's where I've got that kind of distorted, weird reflection there on the right. But um, yeah, so now I gotta do the bank and the water. <laughs> and this is going to be, for me, almost as much fun as doing all the detail in the otter's faces. So I keep going back and forth, and I'm using a, um, a nice little uh, ivory filbert here and just popping in um, you know some of the dark values in the mud and again keeping the compositional elements in mind I decided to add a little bit of green uh, moss over here to the side on the bank because I know I've got the greens and I want to be able to create um, just you know where your eye sees almost like a triangle it's a compositional element and I put that moss strategically on that little spot and here I'm using the kind of the the more purpley color of the mud. I'm, I've made the mud using the um, purple lake and raw umber and a little titanium white to create this this cool mud color. And it's the same color that's in the tails, and, and you can see it in the tail of the right directly above the mud. And that helps make everything kind of gel. You know, it makes everything very um, harmonious, if you will. So um, that's what's going on here, creating the mud, and the mud is fun. Um, I'm able to use lighter textures or lighter values to create some of the texture in the mud. But these are the colors that's going in, and as it goes towards the right side, I get a little bit darker and cooler. Um, I want the eye going in this direction, so this is why I'm keeping my lights towards the left side a little bit more. But, yep, we're getting the mud in, and then next will come the water and its reflections. And so much fun, so much fun. When doing reflections in water, you have to be conscious of what's directly above you. <laughs> and you have to do it in somewhat of a mirror image. So, you you know, I'm looking at the rump of the upper, uh, you know, the otter above and the grass above. And I'm kind of suggesting that that will be where the light shows up in the water. And I'm using a softer brush to just kind of, you know, make it a little softer. And I'm using my little rigger to put in some of the highlights around the water. And I'm using, it, it does kind of look like titanium white here, but it's really a combination of uh, king's blue and white. And to suggest that there is water on the mud itself, I'm, I'm using that, that light color, that king's blue, to suggest little water droplets. Just a slick, wet surface. And you can see my references on the on the right, basically, or on the left. I keep popping through different references just to look at water. Um, but because you know, they're never going to be the same because I don't. I uh, have different subjects that will be reflected in the water. But I just needed to have something to look at to to get the idea. But you could you can see now this the mud is looking wetter. Everything has um, is flowing. I'm using my 279 series um, um, soft hair brush by Rosemary to do that softening effect in the water because I am working wet on wet. It does make for a nice soft surface. That paint scraping tool is awesome. And here's our completed piece. And you can see, there's a forgive the reflection. There's a little bit of a reflection coming from this direction, but I've got my little my little critters little otters and the grass is, is, was fun. And uh, there we are. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Oh, wasn't that fun? This is, this is uh, obviously, I'm showing you again, the actual completed piece. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit, a little bit about some of the compositional elements that went into the work. Now, 
um, I had several references that I worked from to do the do this piece. Um, the original reference had the otters in just grass, and I wanted to put them by a riverbank. And so some of the elements, you know, I used the mud pulling down in this direction, so it, your eye is kind of going down like this. And there is somewhat of that triangle um, element of composition in here. I have the green of the grass here. I have a little bit of green moss here and the reflection of the green of the grass above here. So you do have this kind of triangle going on. You have your element of eye kind of going in these directions. And I just like to play around that way with different compositional elements. Um, one of the fun parts that I really had, believe it or not, was painting the mud. Now the mud, a lot of the colors that I used in the mud are the same colors that I used in the otters themselves. There is a kind of a, I used a lot of uh, the paint called um, um, Purple Lake and it's great for mixing into raw umber to create kind of a cool purpley hued brown. And that's a lot of what you see here in the mud. And actually there's a lot of that in some of the base of the tails and some of these areas of the um, otter. So that helps to make a really homogenous piece. I mean, I won't say homogenous, but harmonious piece when you're using a lot of the same colors throughout the piece. I think the most, um, I guess, um, odd color or color that is different than all the other colors is the green of the grass. And again, I used it in three spots. And even if you look, the the moss on the side is very subtle. It's not like in your face, but it is there. And I think it does pull your eye to those greens because they are different. So there it is. If you have any questions about anything I covered in today's video, please leave it in the comment section. I'll get to you. And if you have any suggestions on something you'd like to see painted, I take everything into consideration. And so go ahead and leave it in the comment section and I'll, I'll consider it. And um, I look forward to talking to you here in the comment sections. If you do like this sort of thing, but want a little bit more, um, a little bit more in detail, full-time, real-time type of uh, painting tutorial, please check out my Patreon channel and uh, I can see you there too. So from Kingsport, Tennessee, I wanna say thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.